Hey guys, welcome back to Raver's Mead. Um, it's mid-August right now and I have noticed a very distinct shift in the seasons the last week or so. Uh, it's definitely feeling autumnal here now. Um, it's just, I mean it's still hot um, but everything's just starting to change all of a sudden. Uh, some of the leaves have started dropping off the trees around here. The horses have started growing um, winter coats again, which is insane given the fact that we're averaging 20 degree days still. Um, lots of berries and fruits are starting to ripen around the fields as well. Um, yeah, it's just starting to feel really, really autumnal. Uh, so I thought I would do a vlog with you guys today. Um, and just have a little walk around and have a look at some stuff and I want to share my thoughts on the enormous list of projects that we still have to finish before winter hits this year. Um, we've kind of done that classic thing where we've come into the year all guns blazing and then summer has really hit and we've just spent a lot of time enjoying the horses and going to shows and stuff and now winter is creeping back on us and we have a lot of jobs that need to be done before winter hits uh, so let me take you around and show you guys um, what's going on really okay so the first big job that we have uh, that we need to get done ASAP is sorting out a new muck heap which is going to be going behind me in here so that right there is the pig house which we have botched up yet again because she keeps breaking it um, and behind me here next to the piggy house is going to be our new muck heap um, so the muck trailer is going to be going soon we had a phone call from the guy who uh, we don't own the muck trailer uh, the guy who removes our muck heap uh, gave it to us here to use uh, just because it's easier for them to just come and hitch up to a trailer rather than coming in and emptying a muck heap um, but he's going to be needing that back soon so we need to get this area fenced in properly we're going to clad it out with some wooden boards we have here uh, yeah so that's that's a job that we really need to get done ASAP I actually just ordered the timber for this yesterday so that is going to be done hopefully in the next couple of weeks fingers crossed um, another little job I have to get done is I need to finish cleaning this mess out so uh, the winter pig pen has been repaired uh, the fencing's been rejiggled and everything uh, but it's just a mess in there I need to get in there and scrape all of the dirt and the muck out I need to get all those bits of old timber out of the way and just clear it out and get it ready for the pig because she's going to be coming in well it depends on the weather really I mean I'm hoping we're going to have a nice warm dryish late autumn um, I mean our record is we've been on the ground out here as late as November before but once the wet really sets in uh, we don't we don't go on the grass at all so everything comes up here in this little turnout yard piggy goes in her little pen just over there um, and yeah that's it until spring again then so that's two jobs that need doing um, another thing that we desperately need to do is to repair the back of our stables uh, because our horses are just relentless vandals. I don't know if other people's horses are like this but ours are always breaking things. Always. Um, now I did come behind here and clear all of the vegetation out. Oh, it's not too bad, some of it's grown back. Uh, yeah I don't know if you can see down there. Um, it's probably not the best angle of this actually. Let me climb over and take you guys in for a proper look. So this is the back of Woody's stable. This isn't too bad. As you can see, we've had to put an extra piece of timber in down there because he pushed the bottom out. 
But the really bad one is this one. Um, as you can see, that is just a mess. Uh, so yeah, that is not going to do another winter with blue in there unless we reinforce that and patch that back up. So um, yeah, that's another fairly urgent job that needs doing before they come in. I mean, they're still using the stables, but obviously once they're in, like in, in, and they've only got turnout instead of grazing, they get a little bit more destructive, we find. So that has to be fixed before the horses come in. Um, and yeah, there's just a whole bunch of other jobs I have to do as well. Um, I need to get the fences treated. Where it is so wet here, we find that our timber rots really quickly. So I need to go around and get some wood preserver on all of our fences. Um, I don't think the buildings are going to need doing this year because I tried some different paint and that seems to have worked really well. Uh, but I do need to do the back of the shelter over there. Uh, where it's tucked in against the trees there, that tends to get a bit manky and can go a bit rotten rather quickly. So yeah, I've got a load of painting that I need to do still. Uh, and then it's on to ground maintenance. So we got kind of stung early on this year. Let me just sit down and I'll chat to you guys. Um, so we got kind of stung earlier on this year, around February. Uh, so the guy that we've always gotten our hay off of, uh, he rang us up and basically said that he'd sold everything and that they didn't have anything to sell us going forward, basically. Well, that was about the end of February this year. And I don't know if, what it was like in other areas, but around here there just wasn't any hay it, there was a bit of a shortage going on um so that wasn't great i have a cat on my lap now <laughs> uh that wasn't great that was a bit of a scare obviously we managed to sort it out and we found some other hay suppliers um and we managed to get by but we don't ever want to find ourselves in that position again so what we're doing is um <laughs> it's my cat's tail <laughs> do you want to come in the shop biddy thank you um, yeah, so what we're going to do is stock up on as much of everything as we can. Um, so our little, ow, mind your claws, our little uh, tent barn that we've got around the back, we're going to fill that up. We've actually got hay coming tomorrow. We've got a hundred bales coming, small bales. Um, we're going to get some haylage in as well. So on our driveway where the muck trailer is now, once that's gone, we're going to go ahead and put haylage there um, just because it's a good dry place out of the way for that. We have had haylage there in the past actually so we know that works really well. Um, and we're doing the same with bedding so I can actually show you guys that because a lot of our bedding came yesterday. Um, I do want to get more in to be fair but we're doing okay on the bedding front right now. But I'd like to get enough in to last us the winter. So, ta -da! yeah, so we use a mixture of wood pellets and shavings. Um, so, snowflake soft chip. I like a nice small flaked shaving, I don't like the big chunky stuff very much. Um, just don't get on with it basically. And yeah, the Oh, some feed bags in here and the molly, uh, molly chaff extra. I'm saying what I'm seeing <laughs> um, and the wood pellets. So I want to go ahead and get another pallet of the wood pellets. They tend to go cheaper in the summer um, by a significant amount. It's like £50 cheaper per pallet. I buy it in bulk. I buy it by the pallet load. It's just so much easier, cheaper, less painful all round. Um, so I want to go ahead and get another pallet of that in here, ASAP. Basically, as soon as I've got the money, I'm getting it. Um, and yeah, so we're stocking up on everything because we don't want to get caught short ever again. Um, 
I mean, we had a few days of absolute panic earlier on this year, thinking we weren't going to be able to get fodder for the horses. And equally, I've gone to buy bedding before in the middle of winter, and all the companies are like, oh, sorry, there was a shipping issue, and we we're not going to have any in for the next three months. Or, you know, especially with the wood pellets, because it's used as a biofuel as well. People use it for heating. So if you have an extra cold winter, everyone buys it for their wood burners. And then we don't have availability for equestrian use so much so you know I've been had some issues in the past so this year we're trying to get really organized and get everything in that we think we're going to need for the winter now um, so we're getting there like I said we've got a fair amount of bedding in we've got um, a big load of hay coming tomorrow and then hopefully we'll get some haylage in as well get some more bedding in um, and yeah fingers crossed that'll see us through the winter um, and yeah Another thing I need to really start um, thinking about now, I want to start making my purchases for this now so I've got it ready for when the weather's right. Um, I'm actually going to be uh, doing some work in our fields. So um, this spring, because our grass basically, we've been really bad. We've really badly neglected it over the years. We've overgrazed it and we've never put anything back into it. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I suppose it's a bit different when you're on a livery yard because generally speaking the yard owner takes care of maintenance and everything but when you've got your own property um, there's a lot of things to think about like we're always pretty good at keeping on top of weeds weeds and things like that um, and you know like hedge trimming and stuff we always do our ragwort pulling and everything like that but as for actual like pasture care we've kind of let that one go a bit um, so this spring I put some fertilizer out and it's made a massive difference massive massive difference and I overseeded one of our paddocks which also made a massive difference so this autumn I want to go ahead and overseed the whole property um, I think I'm going to try a couple of different types of grass seed like you always get like the horse and pony paddock seed um, but we've got really heavy clay soil so I'm going to go ahead and get some seed varieties that are suitable for the really heavy clay soil that we have as well um, I'm basically going to mix and match a bit and hope that what I put down is going to take and between all of the different species that I'm going to put out there hopefully we'll get a really good healthy um, grass growth in the new year um, fingers crossed and yeah we're going to go ahead and fertilize it as well we're going to use the nitrogen fertilizer and I'm going to go ahead and line the paddocks as well uh, because our soil is just not the pH is just not right um, and the paddocks that we did all, all of that for earlier on in the spring this year uh, they're so much healthier for it um, and also I found out that apparently buttercups don't like nitrogen which is another reason we're putting the nitrogen fertilizer out so fingers crossed though that will um, help with our buttercup issue um, in the new year so that's going to be quite a big task we're not getting anyone in to do any of that work um, we only have two and a half acres I'm more than capable of seeding and fertilizing all of that by hand it surprisingly doesn't take that long like maybe an hour tops to go around the whole property and scatter seed or fertilizer so it's really not that bad um yeah i can't justify paying someone to do that but i do need to start buying those things in now so like i said when the weather's right i can get out there and get that done um yeah so many jobs so many things to buy um and the other thing i want to do as well um I don't know if I've shown you guys this actually, uh, but I've been trying to get a hedgerow established on one side of our property. So um, we've got a really nice hedgerow on one side. We've got a partial hedgerow on another side. So the bottom of our property is the motorway where there's a few trees and stuff, but I'd like it to be a bit more hedgy and solid, just as a bit more of a noise barrier um, and a visual barrier because let's face it, nobody likes looking at the M5 all day. It's a bit grim, but it is what it is. But on the fourth side of our property, there was literally nothing. Um, and so I have been making an effort to try and get a hedgerow established along there and trying to get all native stuff. Everything is horse safe. A lot of it they can eat. Um, so that'll be good for them for foraging once it's established. And a lot of it is stuff that's going to provide fruit for us as well, like your blackberries, um, apple trees, pear trees, cherry trees. Um, and then I've got like the hawthorn and the blackthorn and stuff like that and lots and lots of willow. I planted willow because willow seems to do really well in our land here. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that I want to put in a pre-order for as well is um, 
some more hedgerow plants uh, to go and fill in some of the gaps. Now, I didn't know anything about this when I first started. So I planted them, not last year, but the year before. And I bought the cheapest plants I could find, which meant that they were pretty much seedlings. I mean, they weren't even six inches tall. They were tiny, tiny little things. And when I planted them, we had the worst winter ever. We had so much snow, so much rain, cold and wind, and the poor plants just got battered to within an inch of their lives. Loads of them died, unfortunately. But the ones that are left are looking really good now. Um, so yeah, I just want to go along and fill the gaps. Um, again, I want to give them a bit of love this year, chuck some fertiliser around them, make sure the grass is all pulled out from around them so they've got a bit more of a chance. Um, and yeah, hopefully it might have a bit of a growth spurt in the spring. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to shift more of a focus on taking care of our land a bit more. Um, again, I suppose it's not really something a lot of horse owners think about because they don't own their own land. But when you own your own land, you realise it does need a lot of looking after. Um, and we have neglected ours badly, really badly. <coughs> um, I want to get it back to a point where it's productive and fruitful both for us and for the horses like all of our horses pretty much except Woody get fat on air and um, there's no reason we can't sustain them I mean we only graze six months of the year anyway because of the wet issues we have here in the winter there's no reason we can't sustain most of their fodder needs off of our ground um, via rotational grazing if we look after our grass. We keep moving them on, keep allowing the grass to grow. I mean, this year we've accounted for about 50% of their daily fodder just by grazing, and they've been having tiny nets. Like Nelly and Blue have been having like three to four kilo nets at night, um, which is nothing really. And a lot of the time they're not even eating all of that. And the grass is still growing because we keep moving them on. We're not overgrazing it. Um, so yeah, we just want to get better at that really, um, get better at using the resources that we have, basically. Um, but yeah, that is, oh, we're going to have a busy month or two. I think we're going to get to winter and it's going to be like a sigh of relief because we're going to have a break from trying to get on top of all of this. But yeah, that's, um, that's kind of an update on where we are with stuff, what with the seasons changing. Um, I don't think we're going to put much focus on going to any more horse shows for the year now. Certainly nothing that requires me hiring a lorry. Um, we are still looking into getting a horse box of our own. Um, we're looking at some different options with that, but I can't justify throwing like £100 at a time at a hire lorry when that's £100 at a time I could be putting towards a box of our own. So we're just going to stick to local shows. We've got a dressage venue five minutes up the road from us, which I can go to. Um, I'm going to check out their events list actually and see if there's anything going on up there in the near future because I do quite fancy going out and doing some dressage. I think there's like a summer show at a local riding school that's like a 20 minute hack from us. Um, it's mostly off-roading as well. It's quite a nice hack down there. So I think I might take either Woody or Nell to that. That's at the end of August. Um, but other than that, other than a bit of dressage, I think that's probably going to be it for competitions for us for this year, um, just because we're shifting our focus onto other things, like necessary things, unfortunately. So this is what happens when you have horses and you have your own land as well. Like there's a lot of stuff that needs doing all the time, stuff that needs fixing, stuff that needs maintaining, stuff that needs looking after. Um, and while we do spend a lot of time with our horses, we also have to spend a lot of time looking after what we have here. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and just go sit with the ponies for a few minutes, take you guys with me and we'll just sit and enjoy the fact that we can sit out in the grass and just not get wet and not be cold and miserable. So. Let's go find us a pony and just have a chill for a bit. Oh yeah, another thing that's keeping me busy at the moment as well is my vegetable garden. So I planted a little veggie garden. Um,
I've just realised now I'm down here that there's another little job that I forgot about. There's always jobs to do basically. Um, one more little job that I keep forgetting about is putting up our tyre jump. So we've actually botched together a little mini cross country course around our property. Um, if you can see there's one there. Now I am yet to be brave enough to jump that one. I think we're going to have to lower it a bit. Um, as you've seen from my jumping videos, I'm not the bravest jumper in the world. In fact, I'm an absolute wuss when it comes to it. Uh, but yeah, everything else that we have, I've jumped except for that one. But right here, just behind me here, you can see Blue has spread them around everywhere. Uh, we're going to put up a little tyre jump. Um, so that'll kind of complete the circuit. Uh, I really need to, I haven't actually used it this year. I used it a fair bit last year, but I don't know, I've been a real chicken with jumping this year. And I've just not done much. I don't know why, I don't know what that's all about, but I feel like I need to man up a little bit and um, bring Mr. Woodster out here and have a go at jumping this little course. Maybe I'll have to stick the GoPro on or something and do a little video of that. Take you guys on a tour of our miniature two minute cross country course. Oh. Right, I'm back up top now. Um, it's just too noisy down there to do any filming really. I don't know how much of that, if any of it, I'm going to be able to use, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there for today, guys. I've got stables that need mucking out. I've got horses that I want to ride. Um, I've got gardening to do. I've got so much stuff to do. I've got fence painting to do. The list just goes on and on and on. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, and I will see you all in our next video. Bye.